From being a minority sport, golf is now very popular, with membership at most clubs fully subscribed. Whilst this is good for the sport, it does bring its own problem of wear and tear on the greens. On many courses, greens were constructed between 1870 and 1930 to cater for the moderate requirements of that period. But nowadays, greens are expected to be in play all the year round. This increased use can lead to compaction, poor drainage and thatch accumulation, which could result in annual meadow grass ingress. A potential remedy could be to modify the existing fertilizer, irrigation and aeration program. Aeration could include any or all of the following. Hollow coring, verti draining, mole ploughing and slit tining. However, if problems still exist after modifying the management program for some time, then reconstruction of the green should be seriously considered. The aim must be to produce a surface which will perform and sustain play over a 12-month period, and to this end, the USGA method of green construction has proved to be effective. Quality of materials and methods used are critical, and expert advice should be taken before embarking on a project. The Sports Turf Research Institute operate laboratories where tests of all materials can be carried out, and advice sought as to any amendments to either materials or procedures necessary to accommodate variations in ground conditions on individual courses. Now a graphical illustration of the reconstruction of a green to the USGA method. Here is a green before reconstruction, in cross-section and in plan. The turf is stripped from the surface and the immediate surrounds of the green. The green itself is then excavated to a depth of 450 millimetres below intended finished levels, with the excavated materials being discarded. The sub-base is then shaped to mirror the intended contours of the finished surface, and level stakes introduced. This allows for the imported materials to be laid to uniform depths. A drainage system is next introduced and a herringbone layout is ideal for most ground conditions. The main drain is laid directly down the main fall, with the laterals at five metre centres. An alternative option is best suited to ground conditions where there is a runoff from higher adjacent ground. The main drain is laid round the edge of the green, with laterals again at five metre centres. In both options, the drainage system is laid in a network of trenches 200 millimetres deep, with a uniform fall of at least one in 200. The pipes are laid in the base of the trench, which is then backfilled to the subsurface with approved gravel. This shows the drains in place and trenches backfilled. The green is built up by first introducing a 100 mm minimum firm depth of the same gravel used to backfill the drainage trenches. This is followed by a 50 mm minimum firm depth of blinding material. Next, a 300 mm minimum firm depth of root zone is laid onto the blinding material. The quality and depth of all materials are extremely important. Finally, the surface is prepared for either seeding or turfing. Seeding should always be the preferred option, but few golf clubs are in the position to be able to wait the required length of time to achieve establishment, which could be in the region of 18 months. The advantage of turfing means the green will be playable more quickly. If turfing is the choice, there are several alternatives. Using existing turf, Possible advantages. The green will have similar characteristics to the original. The turf is older and should wear better. However, the turf may be of poor quality. 
there is a danger of an excessive amount of annual meadow grass. Using turf from an external supplier. Possible advantages. Guaranteed quality. Wide choice of grass cultivars available. Further quantities are readily available. However, turf is grown on different subsurface materials. The turf will probably be young. There will be variation in character between new and old greens. Using turf from an on-course nursery. Possible advantages. Control of quality. Turf is grown in a local environment. The turf may be older and more tolerant to wear. However, the golf course must have the space and the labour available. This video now shows a green reconstruction at Shipley Golf Club, relaying the existing turf. Work commenced during autumn to ensure a period before winter for the turf to develop. The first test cut is made and approved by the head greenkeeper. A new blade has been fitted to the turf cutter to ensure that the turves are cut as thin as possible. This means that most of the thatch at the base of the turf is left behind. The outer edge turves are rolled ready to be stored. Evidence of hollow tining and top dressing can be seen. On the rolled turves are hollow tine marks and previous slit tining cuts. When all the turf has been cut, the next task is to check the levels of the existing green, as the plan is to reconstruct levels more or less as before. The head greenkeeper duly notes the measurements. The rolling and lifting of the turf commences, using a small army of casual workers to supplement the green staff. This is carried out under the head greenkeeper's supervision, like a military operation. After loading, the turf is taken to a flat area nearby, where large polythene sheets are laid out to receive it. Polythene sheeting is ideal for this purpose, provided the turves are not allowed to overlap. In the event of dry weather, it is easy to keep the turf watered. Using this method avoids the risk of turves temporarily rooting into the ground. The route to be used by traffic is clearly defined. Lines are marked to indicate the outline of the original green. The presence of irrigation pipework and where the trenches are to be dug to receive the level stakes. The first trench is excavated to accept the level stakes. The problem with this green can now be seen. A sample of the top 75 millimetres of root zone show the thatch on the surface. There is evidence of previous slitting, but the area between the slits is badly compacted, preventing the passage of moisture and restricting healthy root development. A further sample contains a previous hollow tine full of sandy top dressing and root growth. The first level stake is hammered home to the required depth. The excavated material is loaded onto trailers for removal. Two trenches for lines of level posts have been excavated and the area between has been cleared. Another stake is being put in and carefully lined up with the edge of the old green. 